It's really very important to me because what we're going to be hearing today is the gospel. And whenever we talk about the gospel, it's always special to me. It's always a special time for us here at Live City Church. Um, we are in the middle of our message series entitled uh, Digging Deep Into the Gospel. Digging Deep Into the Gospel. Let's go and dive right into because we're going to talk about a lot of things today. Let's go and directly and dive into our uh, main text this um, afternoon. And uh, our main text is uh, in Romans chapter 3 verse 21. Um, our main text for today is Romans chapter 3 verse 21 to 24. It says, But now, apart from the law, the righteousness of God has been made known, for which the law and the prophets testify. The righteousness is given through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. There is no difference between Jew and Gentile for all are just oh, sorry Jew and Gentile for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and all are justified freely by the grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. Now, I know for some of you some of you might be thinking and dami naman there's a lot of theological terms right there. Medyo nakakalito, nakaka Nakakatakot. It's, it's in fact scary for some. For others, you love it. You love theological terms. For some, you welcome it. And you, you love hearing discussions like, like this. And I'd like to give you two reasons why even for some of you, you are scared of hearing these theological thoughts. Yung righteousness, justification by faith, justified, redemption, yung mga nakahighlight dyan. Even if you feel like you, you're scared of hearing these theological terms. Let me give you two um, two main reasons why we should not we should not shy away from these theological terms. Right. The first one is this: when we understand when we understand God's love deeper, it enhances greatly our relationship with Him. If we from our head we understand truly what the love of God is. It enhances our appreciation of God's love. And when that happens, our relationship with Him is also enhanced. Now, parang ganito again. when you are growing as a kid, and for those of you who are parents, you know this, when you are dealing with your kids, and we had experiences, we have experiences with this, uh, with, with my kids. And I know for some of you who are also, uh, all of us were... Um, sons and daughters, kids in the past, uh, you know that while you're growing up as a kid, all you know is that your parents would just scold you or would just tell you what to do and, and you know, all those rules and regulations sometimes within their house and you hate it, you don't know what's going on, you don't know what your parents are doing, you just follow and murmur sometimes and sometimes you are even... Uh, not respectful to your parents. But as you grow, you will learn that and you will learn to appreciate more what your parents did in the past. That is, as you grow, you, your understanding of what your parents did to you and for you, it grows. You also are able to grow your relationship with, with your parents. Diba? So that's also how our understanding of the love of God is. We need to grow in a relationship with Jesus and for us to do that, we need to understand more and dig deeper into that kind of love that Jesus has given us. And so that's very important. Number one, we need to understand God's love deeper and because it enhances greatly our relationship with Him. Number two, and this is an outflow of my discussions, our discussion with our our um, our life group, men's, uh, the Iron Man uh, Mga Iron Man dyan, taas ang kamay, taas ang kamay. Huh? Um, so, the first, the second one is this. Now, when we understand God's love, it and deeper, no, it enables us to confidently share His love to others. Right? So, when you understand the gospel, when you understand the gospel, you are, you become confident when you, 
as, as far as articulating God's love to your friends is concerned. In fact, I always challenge our life groups to uh, our life group uh, within our uh, men's group yung sa uh, sa Iron Man. But I'm also encouraging every one of you, whether you are part of a life group or not. But if you are a follower of Jesus, I'm encouraging you to ask for opportunity. You pray for opportunity to share the good news of God's love, the gospel, to others. Because, and when you pray, God will give you that opportunity. And when God gives you that opportunity, you are prepared. You are ready because you can now articulate even more the gospel, the love of Jesus, if you understand deeply that particular thing that we're talking about right now. The gospel. No? Itong mga terminologies na pinag-aaralan natin ngayon. Now, Last uh, first week, let's make a quick review. The first week in, in our Digging Deep into the Gospel series, we talked about reconciliation. We talked about how we are separated from God because of our sin, because of our parents' sin, and it also our because of our sin. And the Gospel is that because of what Jesus Christ has done on the cross when He died on the cross for all of us, He reconciled, or we are now reconciled with with him with the father with with god we are now reconciled because of uh, what jesus christ died did on the cross for all of us that's number one that's a week number one the week number two we talked about substitution we are uh, supposed to be the one to suffer for our sins and yet the gospel says that because of jesus just like the lamb that was slaughtered for the sin of israel he is slaughtered for the sins of the world he slaughtered for your sin he died for your sins ayan ang substitution we are instead of us dying for our sins because of our sins jesus when he died on the cross substituted for for us that's our week number two and last week uh, mike talked to us about uh, justification it's a legal term as we learned about it we we learn that we are all guilty in the sight of God, that we sin against Him every day. Tama naman yan, di ba? And we are damned for eternity because of that. But the gospel is, because of what Jesus Christ has done for us, we are justified or in the eyes of God as if we are not or we have not sinned. No? Yan ang justification. That's the gospel. With, because of what Jesus Christ has done for you, as far as God is concerned, when He looks at you, He looks at Jesus, the perfect Lamb of God. And you are justified. no? And you are as if you have not sinned from God's perspective. Now, that's Mike said that's foundational and I totally, totally agree. You need to understand for you to articulate the gospel even more and freely, you need to understand what justification is all about. Now today, we're going to talk about redemption. And redemption is closely connected with um, with with uh, justification, and we're going to understand that later on. Now, what I'm going to be doing now is to talk about the principle of redemption, the theological principle of redemption for the next ten to uh, twelve minutes, ten to twelve minutes lang. And I don't want you don't zone out. Okay? Don't zone out. You have to understand what we're going to be talking about. And I promise you, there will be practical application towards the end of this theological concept that we're going to be talking about today. You don't zone out. You take notes if you have to take notes because we're going to have exams later on. <laughs> exams later on. Huh? Okay, so, uh, ready? Ready na? Say yes if you're ready. Huh? Ready, ready? Mrs. Gamboa in the other room, are you ready? Say yes. <laughs> okay, we're all ready and we're about to, to dive into our um, topic today, redemption. All right, so we talk about, let's talk about redemption today. Now, as Filipinos, we it's hard for us to, to conceptualize, to uh, think about what redemption is all about. And the better, the best way for me to illustrate this is pawn shop, okay? And uh, it's ridiculous, but this is not going to be the perfect illustration for this. Pawn shop, we know that Palawan pawn shop, M. Louis Lear, uh, yung mga pawn shop natin dyan. Sino, sino na sa atin ang nagpunta sa pawn shop? 
para ipon ang ating mga ginto at mga rilo, mga Rolex natin diyan, di ba? Uh, ganun na ginagawa natin natin if we if we want to um to if we don't have money, if you run out of money and uh, uh we want quick return, quick money um for 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 us, no? What we do is we go to a pawn shop, we pawn our 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 belongings. Pwede nang i-pawn ngayon ang ano, ang i-pawn shop ngayon ang ano, ang mga cellphones. Pwede na rin 'yan. And then what you do, what do you do to uh to redeem it back? You pay the pawn shop back for 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 that uh, item that you have um uh lent to the pawn shop. Uh, that's not, uh, I mean, that's the closest that us as Filipinos can talk about, can uh, illustrate the redemption. But we have a couple of Americans in our um, in our church, and today we logged in, Mike um, and Garrett. Uh, you you know your American history, and I am quoting this as not as as, as an American, obviously, but I'm just reading from their uh, from, from their history books. They have the history of slavery for for centuries and um, that's uh, probably the closest that we can illustrate what redemption is because if we talk about redemption let's talk about what redemption is all about from the perspective of the bible because redemption actually is a metaphor for the practice of slavery no? it's a metaphor for the uh, practice of um, slavery and uh, when we uh, when we read about our uh, main text today it says yung Romans chapter 3 verse 24 it says and all are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came from Christ Jesus so you are justified ito yung pinag-usapan natin last week we are justification by by faith we are justified freely by his grace and that is true sabi ni ni Paul that is true the redemption ano ibig sabihin ng redemption paano natin may explain yung redemption na sinasabi ni Paul dito redemption that comes from or that came by Christ Jesus sabi ni um Leon Morris he is um uh, a new testament uh, scholar um an Australian New Testament scholar sabi niya the actual usage of apo- apolotrosis apolotrosis right can you say that with me apolotrosis Man. the greek word no na ginamit dito sa redemption sabi dito the greek word from which we get redemption shows what ransoming or ransom no yung mga terminology natin ngayon natin na natin Yung redemption dito, ito yung tinatawag na ransoming rather than deliverance. Deliverance to be uh, to be the essential meaning of of the text. And when we define ransoming, ransom, we go to a very reliable encyclopedia called Google. <laughs> this is what Google said with with ransom. It says, and obviously, uh, or most English speaking person can define what a ransom is it says uh, the sum of money or other payment demanded or paid for the release of a prisoner okay yun ang ransom yun ibig sabihin ng ransom so yung redemption is connected with ransom you are redeemed because of the ransom and that ransom is the sum of money or the payment demanded for or, or paid for the release of someone who is captivated or uh, a captive or uh, a prisoner right so yung slavery nito it's an old testament practice no so we talk about ransom we talk about uh, redemption because slavery is an old testament practice um mahabang malaking uh, issue pa to malaking topic maaaring tinatanong niyo bakit may slavery sa old testament bakit may slavery sa sa bible this is not the topic that we're going to that we are talking about right now but there's specific answers for that but for now let's just uh, let's just learn and and understand that slavery is an old testament um, practice right so when we talk about when we explain redemption we need to explain redemption from that perspective, from the perspective of the Old Testament. Okay, so that's what we're going to be doing today. 
Um, we're going to try to explain redemption para maintindihan natin how it applies to us today. We need to talk about redemption from the perspective of the Old Testament. So the first one, as we explain what redemption is all about, is this. Redemption is for people in bondage. So, yan yung nabangit natin kanina. Redemption is for people in bondage. If you are, uh, if uh, redemption only is for those who are in bondage, meaning if you are captured, if you are enslaved, you are a slave uh, to something or to someone or to a system. If you need to be redeemed, no, you are you need to be a person in bandage. So it's a in, for old cost uh, Old Testament context. These are the, for instance, the people of Israel who are slaves in Egypt. This is what Exodus chapter six verse six says. It says, "Therefore, to the sons of Israel, I am the Lord, and I am willing. I I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians, and I will deliver you." from their bandage Ito yun, di ba? and I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and with great judgment sabi ni God sabi ni Yahweh you the people of Israel you are now uh, I am the Lord and I'm going to redeem you out of bandage of slavery from Egypt okay so yun ang uh, sabi ni, ni God that's what redemption is all about redemption is for people in bandage you no know? redemption is for people in bandage is number 1 number 2 is that redemption requires a price to be paid you no know? redemption requires a uh, a price to be paid if you are redeemed there needs to be a price to be paid um for instance kasi ang, ang redemption or ang slavery is um there is a master and slave relationship and if you are the master you own that particular slave and so for someone to redeem a slave you need to pay a price to redeem that slave that's what slavery is from the old testament context we can read this and we're not going to be reading the entire thing but we can read this in exodus 21 verse 29 to 30 that's uh, what redemption is number one redemption is for people in bondage number two redemption requires a price to be paid and lastly redemption expresses a change of masters there's a change of of master when you are redeemed uh, hindi ko na ilagay dito sa sa slide ko pero in exodus chapter 3 um verse uh, let me see so wala wala nga in exodus chapter 6 verse uh, 7 it says then i will take you for my people and i will be your god and you shall know that i am the lord your god who brought you out from under the burdens of the egyptians ang ibig sabihin nito ganito when someone uh, purchased or or paid the price redeemed from slavery you from being the uh, from being uh, uh, slave to or the uh, to your master one, the one who uh, who purchased you, the one who paid the price for you, that person becomes your new master. So may pagbabago, may nagbagong master. The first one is uh, in the case of Israel, their masters were the is uh, the Egyptians, and when God Yahweh purchased them and when God Yahweh um, redeemed them from slavery technically speaking from this perspective God now becomes their new master yun ang ibig sabihin ng, ng point na to na for redemption redemption is uh, exp an expression of a change of masters Master 1 becomes your old master and when you are purchased by Master 2 or you are redeemed by Master 2, Master 2 now becomes your new master. Alright, so that's what redemption, the theological concept of redemption. Re let's review. Review tayo. Kasi may exam nga tayo mamaya mamaya eh. <laughs> Alright. What is redemption? Redemption is for people who are in bandage. Number 2, redemption is uh, it requires a price 
to be paid. Okay? And number three, redemption expresses a change of masters. Redemption is uh, an expression of a change of masters. Now, having that perspective, ito yung mga nasa isip natin, having that as your perspective, let's now read these verses. Romans 6, uh, verse 6, 17 to 18. It says, But thanks be to God that though you were slaves to sin, New Testament na to, ah, Paul is speaking here. Sabi niya, sorry. Okay. There you go, sorry. Um, but thanks be to God that though you were slaves of sin, you became obedient from the heart of that uh, form of teaching to which you were committed and having been freed from sin you became slaves to righteousness nakita niyo yung mga highlighted words number one you are slaves to sin number two you are slaves when you were redeemed you are freed from sins and then you became slaves of righteousness tandaan natin yan ha ito yung magandang application sa buhay natin later on Sabi dito, sa, uh, as we continue, Romans 6, 22-23, it says, But now, having been, what? Freed from sin, and slaved to God, you derive your benefit resulting in sanctification and the outcome, what's the outcome? Eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Now, ano yung Ano yung application nito sa atin ngayon? After understanding the, the theological concept of what redemption is. We are, we need to understand first and foremost that we are all, all of us are slaves to sin. All of us are slaves to sin. Somebody says that sin is my middle name and sinning is what I do. Meron bang ganun sa atin? Ano nyo nga? Taas nyo kamay. Sin is my middle name and sinning is what I do. Because that's who we are. We can't help it. We sin. You don't teach a child na, you don't teach a child how to sin. You teach a child how not to sin. Because by nature, our nature is to sin because we are slaves to sin. Diba? Yun ang unang-una natin kailangan matandaan. We are, if we, if we say that we are slaves to sin, that also means that we are unable to resist it. We are unable. If you are still slave to sin, you will be un you are unable to resist sin. We justify sin. We obey sin. Pag sinabi ni sin, gawin mo to. Opo, master. Sabi natin kay sin, gawin mo to. Obey, we obey sin. And sometimes, we get to love sin. We have a love affair with sin. That's what being a slave to sin is. And if you look back in your life, and even probably for some of you today, maybe you can relate. Maybe that's you. Maybe that was you in the past. You were slaves. You are a slave to sin. But here's what the gospel is. Ito yung sinabi ng mga verses na binasa natin kanina. That while we are slaves to sin, when Jesus died on the cross, He forgave us of our sins. Ito yung justification. He forgave us for of our sins and then not just only forgive us for all of our sins. He redeemed us from being slaves to sin. He redeemed us from being slaves to sin. What does that mean? That means that you can now, um, that if you are not yet a follower of Jesus, and I, I'm I'm painting a broad strokes, kasi itong, itong message natin is not just for those of you who are logged in dito sa Zoom. Some of us are also, some of you are watching this uh, online sa Facebook, and we don't know who you are, but we love you. We want you to, hear this message and this is the gospel for you. Um, if you are not yet a follower of Jesus, 
that means that you can try to resist sin. You can try to do that, of course. You may be successful at times, but you are still in bondage with sin. You're always going to go back to that as your master. Sin, you will try to correct yourself. You can try to run out from your uh, addiction or from uh, your whatever it is that you are doing right now, but you are still in bondage to that sin. And so when you accept Christ's offer of salvation, sabi ni Jesus, I'm going offering this to you. I died for you and for your, I, I prayed for your sins. I'm offering this as a free gift. This is grace. If we, when you accept Christ's offer of forgiveness, you are released, um, you're not just released from the penalty of sin, but you're also released from the power, from the power of sin. Alam nyo, gustong gusto ko wala si Jim ngayon. Ah, ako naka-log in ngayon si Jim. Palagay ko wala eh. Pero Jim is uh, an employee of um, of, uh, of um, Seven Asia. Diba? For some of you who have been uh, watching 700 Club, sila yung nagpuproduce nun eh. I, I love hearing yung mga testimonies and, and the stories about how people are um, because of the gospel, because of what Jesus Christ, accepting what Jesus Christ has done for them. Uh, they We can hear stories from people who are gamblers, addiction, addicted to pornography, addicted to, uh, uh, to money, addicted to whatever it is that they are addicted to and then they, they are, uh, some of them are uh, into deep pile of sin and yet when they accept Christ suddenly that bandage from from sin they are released and they are now free they they have broken free from from their sinful habits from from their cycle because when you accept Christ as your savior you are not just released from the penalty of sin you are not just forgiven of your sins but you are also released from the power of sin, you are redeemed from from the power, uh, from being under the power of sin. That that's if you are yet a follower of Je not a follower of Jesus, I encourage you to think about um, this offer that Jesus Christ is is offering you this free gift of forgiveness. Now, if you are a follower of Jesus, um, when you uh, when you sin and you come face to face with sin. You always have to remind yourself that you're al already free from the bandage of sin. Dapat palagi yung ano yan, iisip niyo palagi, sinasabi niyo palagi sa sarili niyo. No, I am not in right now I'm not anymore enslaved to sin. I have been freed from the bandage of sin. I don't need to answer to you sin. No, you, you don't have to do that anymore. You, you don't need to do that. You don't have to answer to sin anymore. But you know why? Because when you have accepted Christ, you now have a new master. No, Sabi natin kanina, di ba? Redemption is um, a declaration that you now have a new master. From the master one, you now become master. You are now... Um, enslaved to master 2 ito yung ibig sabihin dito sa uh, Romans chapter uh, 6 verse 22 to 23 it says but now having been freed from sin you are now free from from the bondage of sin and now you are enslaved to God you are derived you derive your benefit resulting in sanctification and the outcome eternal life for the wages of sin is death um but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. So everyone, every one of us is, is enslaved to something or someone. Hmm? Lahat tayo, every one of us is a slave to something or someone. Even if you're a follower of Jesus, you are a slave to something or someone. But here's the question for all of us today. To which or to whom are you a slave of? To which or to whom are you a slave of? You are a slave to something or someone. Kanino ka is slave? Now, 
some of you, you, you may you may cringe with what I'm about to do and uh, because I'm painting a broad stroke, uh, some of you are who are listening this, you may be able to relate to some of uh, these things that I'm going to be talking about and and you need to hear this so that you will be able to recognize this and and the uh, and acknowledge that you should not be under the power of slavery from from sin but let me ask you this to which are you a slave of today are you a slave of addiction of a substance are you a slave of uh, gambling are you a slave of your sexual desires pornography perhaps or uh, are you a slave of um, of uh, your sexual desires your sex outside of marriage are you a slave of your relationships you think like that your relationship is your savior uh, are you a slave of your profession um, you think that work is the most important uh, part of your being you might be a slave of of uh, of your profession. Meron ang term di ba na corporate slave sabi nila. Although some of you are not corporate slaves but generally speaking profession. Are you slave of your profession? Is profession your or your work the number one priority in your life? Are you slave to your profession? Or are you a slave of yourself? Hmm. That can be a thing. Are you a slave of pride? Uh, do you think that you are uh, you, that you can do life on your own without the help of everyone else? Or without the help of God you think that you are the center of the universe are you a, a slave of any of these things or are you a slave to Christ are you a slave to Christ are you submitting to Christ's will and desires for your life are you submitting to Christ's will and desires for your life are you what are you to which are you a slave of? Uh, when I ask all of these things to you, uh, I can hear some people saying this, kasi madalas ko naririnig din to eh. Sabi nila, I want freedom! Being a Christian is being limited. Very limited, limiting. Sabi niya, being a Christian is very limiting. I want to do my own thing. KJ naman ng mga Christian. Dalas natin naririnig yan, di ba? Ang KJ naman ng mga Christian. Alam nyo, true freedom is to be enslaved to God. True freedom is to be enslaved to God. Um, you are free to do the right thing. Knowing that, knowing what is right and what is wrong. That's what true freedom is all about. You are free from the condemnation of the past. You are forgiven. You don't have to look back to your past sins and still be condemned by thinking about it. No, when you are in Christ, when Christ, when God is your master, if you are enslaved to God, you are free from condemnation from your past sin. Um, and you are, and you, what you need to do is, when, especially if you are a follower of Jesus, you need to stop acting like you are still under the curse of slavery. Sometimes kasi, even if you are a follower of Jesus now, Kaya pa ulit ulit pa rin yung kasalanan natin. Kahit you are still, for some of you are living in sin, you you feel like you cannot go out from that um that um slavery from sin. Hindi hindi ka makawala doon sa slavery from from sin. Pero you know what? You have if you are a follower of Jesus, you have the power of the Holy Spirit to overcome your your sin. Don't act as if you don't have the, the Holy Spirit in your life. Because He is present in your life. If you have accepted Christ as your Savior, you now have the capability to run away from that sin, to abandon that sin that is slavering you right now. And especially if you are a follower of Jesus, you are now part of a community of believers we call church to help you overcome sin. And that's why very important yung uh, life groups natin dito or yung church natin is very important when uh, people will will guide you when uh, you are still struggling from a certain um, scene 
your your community can can help you go through the process and and help you overcome um the process uh, can can help you overcome your being slave to sin you don't have to act like you are under still under the curse of slavery because Christ through his death on the cross has redeemed you from that slavery you are now free and you are now under the lordship you are now god now is your master not sin you have to understand that i cannot overemphasize that that's what the gospel is all about you are now purchased by the blood of jesus by the blood of lamb sabi ng revelation you are now redeemed by christ a redeemer is a good master kung pamimiliin tayo kung kanino ang master natin i'd rather be um, i'd rather be under the lordship or i'd rather have god as my master than sin because our redeemer is a good master jesus our redeemer is a good master who wants the best for us sin's goal is to hurt you you know that's what being under the power of and being enslaved by sin is eventually sabi nga ni Craig Groeschel um, some of you uh, probably have heard him talk about this sin sometimes is just you know it's uh, it's fun for, for a while sin is fun for a while but eventually just like sneeze uh, it, it's uh, fun going out but after that you see the mess all over broken relationship broken childhood broken emotional state you no know, bro broken finances bo broken everything and that's what sin that's what sin's goal is for you but our new master the goal is to give you the best in life the best what, what the best uh this life can offer diba? um God came, uh, God, Jesus came to give you the life, the life that only He can provide. This is what the gospel is, the gospel that is found in redemption. Before we close, I hope that uh, we're going to be talking about this and uh, for those of you who are part of um, of your life groups, this is part of the exam later on. <laughs> Jesus redeemed us while we were still helpless, ungodly sinners, even his enemies. The question for you all of us right now is this, how will you respond to this kind love? How will you respond to this kind of love? Let me pray for all of us today. Let's bow our heads wherever you are right now. Lord, thank you for those of us who have heard this message and thank you for allowing us to hear this message. The message that talks about the beauty of what you have done for us on the cross. Thank you, Lord, for um, what Jesus Christ has done for us and because of what he has done, we are now free not just from the condemnation of sin, but also from the power of sin. Those of you who are followers of Jesus, maybe for some of you right now, um, you know that you wanted to follow Jesus and His will in your life, but you feel like the, 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 the hold of sin is still tight in your life. And you feel like you can't get out of it. But my prayer for all of you right now is for you to recognize that you are not in any way under the condemnation uh, the, the the bondage of sin anymore and what you can do is to just grab hold of that uh, promise that jesus has given us you activate the holy spirit in your life and you embrace the community the the, the church community that you are part of right now lord i'm praying for those 
of us right now who are still struggling with with sin we believe lord that the holy spirit is capable more than capable of empowering us to overcome these sins in our life thank you lord for this promise for some of you who are listening this uh, who are watching and listening um today maybe you're listening this as an archive a replay and maybe this is the first time for you to uh, understand that jesus is offering you the salvation this forgiveness that only he can give jesus died on the cross for you jesus is offering this for free this is what grace is all about and what i i'm asking you to do right now is to open up your heart and accept jesus as your savior if that is you today i'd like to offer a special prayer for you uh, lord and you can repeat this prayer after me as a, a way for you to express your um your desires in your life right now lord thank you for dying on the cross for me thank you for redeeming me and thank you for paying for my sins and i'm walk i'm going to walk in the power of the holy spirit from here on thank you for your love we pray all of these things in the name of jesus amen and amen